Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning, and uh, I'm doing a Bible study on my own, so I thought I'd share kind of what I'm doing. Uh, I got my dispensational truth and, of course, my King James Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 1, the Bible says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. Uh, a steward, or a, you know what a stewardess is on an airplane. Well, a steward is someone that you entrust your valuables uh, with. And uh, so we are, if you are a minister of Christ, uh, you are to be a steward of the mysteries of God. You should, he's entrusting the preachers, teachers, uh, pretty much every Christian with the mysteries of God. So it'd be a good idea to know what those mysteries are. And uh, you would not believe how many Bible-believing Christians have no idea what it is, what the mysteries are. So we're going to look at uh, Clarence Larkin's. Uh, this is Dispensational Truth, the one I just got. Thank you very much. Gospel over gimmicks. Storm and Norman. Uh gave me this and praise God for that I love this thing <laughs> and uh, I've read it so, uh, a few times and uh, it's all it's just so much in here it's a college education I'm not kidding if uh, you get all this down and you get to where you can rightly divide the word of truth that'll open that Bible up but anyhow there's a uh, he's got more than uh, the seven mysteries of the kingdom of God. Now, a lot of people, and I, I'm leaning this way, believe there is a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven would be uh, the earthly kingdom, physical kingdom. The kingdom of God is in you, and uh, that's the, uh, the kingdom of God which is in you. Uh, the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven can be taken by force, uh, and there's no way you could take the kingdom of God. So when they're talking about the kingdom of heaven, they're talking about the earthly kingdom, the physical kingdom he's going to set up. That's the uh, theory or, you know, fact if you believe it. But uh, anyhow, we'll go into this. The mystery... Uh, the Incarnation, 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, re received up into glory. Hallelujah. So that would be the, his first coming to babe, my only begotten son. And he goes... Uh, to John 1, in the beginning was the Word. All right. Uh, the second mystery, the divine indwelling, uh, the indwelling Christ, Christ in you. Uh, Colossians 1, 26 and 27. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations. These mysteries aren't like, a, you know, a mystery you read in a... a a book or something. These mysteries were given to the these men of God, and these mysteries in uh, Paul's epistles were given to Paul by revelation from Jesus Christ Himself, and he was entrusted. They were revealed to Paul. They might have been spoken of earlier, but uh, nobody knew what you know the church age and all that was. That was all revealed to Paul. To whom God, who made unto, uh, known unto you, no, let me just start over, even the mystery which hath been hidden from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. A saint is a born-again believer. Uh, no church can make somebody a saint. Only the Holy Spirit of God can make a saint, okay? Uh, 
to whom God would make known what is uh, the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. And here's the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, then he gives Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh, then on the third mystery is the union of the Jews and Gentiles in the church of God. Uh, there are three kinds of human beings in the world. There's Jew, Gentile, and church of God. You're in one of those. Uh, there are no Jew or Gentiles in the church of God. There are no Gentiles in the Jews, and there are no Jews in the Gentiles. Uh, if you can get this mystery down, 50% uh, of the Bible will open up to you. If you can separate Jew, Gentile, and church of God. And this is in Ephesians 3, uh, 3 through 6. How that by revelation, see, he was given to Paul. Uh, he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a four in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge, Paul's knowledge, in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages, again, he's telling you these mysteries hadn't been taught before. This is a dispensation, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now, now something's changed, revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, uh, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. And then uh, four... Uh, this is talking about all of Christendom. These, uh, Larkin believes that these different churches in Revelation uh, represent different ages, and we would be in the age of Laodicean. Uh, Ephesus would have been the apostolic age, and then the, as and it's it's pretty good study to look into that. <coughs> The seven stars and candlesticks. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in the right hand and uh, seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now, I'll tell you, uh, this. Uh, I'm chasing a rabbit here, but uh, follow those candlesticks. Uh, a lot of people that say we're going through the uh, tribulation, uh, they're not following the candlesticks. Those candlesticks are on earth while the churches are on earth. And after chapter four, they're in heaven. And they, it just, you just read that they represent the church. So don't get messed up on that stuff. Uh, we are going before we are not appointed under wrath. Praise the Lord. All right. And that's, uh, the seven churches mystery. Uh, the mystery of the kingdom of heaven now. A lot of people teach kingdom of heaven is different than kingdom of God. I'm leaning that way myself. Uh, the only thing that gets me is in Matthew is the only one that uses the words kingdom of heaven. Uh, but uh, you'll find the, uh, all the uh, mysteries of the kingdom of heaven in uh, Matthew chapter 13, I believe. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto the, them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, not God. They're not spelt the same, so. But to them it is not given. And these are the seven uh, mysteries, seven parables of the kingdom of heaven. The sower the wheat and the tares, the mustard seed, the leaven, the hidden treasure, the pearl, and the dragnet. 
And uh, see, he's got all this. This is all the church age right here. This before the, it's just wonderful how he does that. And then we're going to go up in the rapture, and we'll find the mystery. Uh, he calls it the translation of the saints. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment and twinkling of the eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And then uh, he gives, of course, uh, 1 Corinthians or 1 Thessalonians 4. Uh, 16 and 17 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are, are alive and remain shall be caught up raptured out together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord and that would be uh, number six on his list and then we come down here Israel's blindness and that's in Romans eleven twenty five. 25 uh, for I would not brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness is, in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles uh, become in uh, Israel's blinded right now. Not all of them. There's always a remnant that gets saved. Uh, then the mystery of iniquity. Let's talk about the Antichrist. For the mystery of it, iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will uh, let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Devil can do uh, signs and wonders just like uh, he imitates the Holy Ghost. So you got to try the spirits, folks. Uh, nine, Babylon the Great. This one was given to the Apostle John. Uh, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, leaving seven, uh, having seven heads. It's hard for me to read this, folks. And ten horns, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and, and decked with gold and precious stones, and pearls having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her own, of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Look into the purple scarlet in the cup and all that and tell me who you think it might be. The mystery. All right. Now, uh, the mystery of the bride of Christ. Well, let's see. Hus okay, he's going into uh, husbands love your wives that he may be present. I'm going to skip down here. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. He's putting Jesus as the husband and uh, the church is the bride of Christ. And then Revelation 21, come hither, I, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit in a great high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of uh heaven from God and uh, then it's talking about the lamb uh, the marriage of the lamb I uh, revel you can read that yourself my time's getting short here uh, and 11 the restoration of all things and this would be the millennial age 
and I'll let you, if you want to take a photo shot and read those or look those up for yourself. Anyway, there's so much in this book that is uh, great, but you should learn uh, what the mysteries, we are to be stewards of the mysteries of God. It'd be a good idea to know what they were. Anyway, I'm running short on time. I can't make a real long video. It cuts off on me. So, Lord bless you. Read your Bible. Pray without ceasing. And have a wonderful day.